Hey everyone, welcome back. Um, it's been a long time since I posted a video. We have been in the thick of it with stuff at our household. So um, I've both been chomping at the bit to get back in it, but also just needing rest. So kind of trying to find that balance. I know you guys know what I mean. So um, this is the painting I think I'm gonna do today and we'll save the other one for tomorrow. There are a couple things I wanted to play with today and, and I wanna talk to you about why so let me just turn this layer off and I'm gonna add a layer and move this one to the bottom and we're gonna come back to this maybe maybe next time we'll see but for now I wanted to talk a little bit about gesture um, whoops I was on the wrong layer so here I am on layer two and I can do some sketching here and I'm just gonna get a darker value so I can play now I have a large enough tablet surface with my XP pen that I can kind of draw with more of my arm and my like my shoulder and my arm not just kind of do wrist drawing with like a super small tablet so that's why I kind of like at least the medium sized tablets is they just give you a little bit more room to to work so here's something um, gesture drawing is a, is a style of drawing that is helpful uh, for an artist to capture the movement or energy or gesture of the pose and I wanted to approach this with a little more of that gestural quality and I'm not going to do tr like a true gesture drawing, which you can, um, you know, if you've done art school or you can go online and look at tutorials for, but I am going to kind of take the spirit of that. And um, a couple of things I'm going to try to do is find the set of the shoulders, the line of the spine, especially as it connects up to the top of the head, and then the set of the hips, which are just going to fade out at the bottom of the canvas. And here you get this strong contrapasto, and then you get um, this suggestion of of the volume of the figure so um i'm let's see what i want to do here is, is draw with some big movements here just to find these long lines the lines of action these long lines um these long energetic lines and it's okay if the the gestural drawing is not 100 percent accurate what you want to do when you're drawing gesture is capture that energy that's more important than proportional accuracy because you're trying to capture something else something a little bit more um something distinct and separate from proportion and it doesn't mean that proportion is not helpful or good it's just a different goal right so here obviously I have the, this arm is a little bit in the wrong place i have it like extending past like you look at where the elbow is and look at her elbow is kind of brushing against the contour of the torso so i probably need to pull that back a little bit but I also want to exaggerate a little bit of this movement and this energy. So I maybe want to stretch that arm out to get that long line that helps feel that reach. So if you get this line out longer, then that means this line for the forearm is out longer. And, and then you get kind of more of that dramatic pose. I also wanted to play because I, I really liked her hair and the, the kind of like tussling of it in the wind. And so I thought that it would be fun to play with that also in a gestural way so that it's not maybe drawn so accurately, but more capturing the spirit of this, this place. I think between the wind in her hair and then that, that kind of calm on her face, like if you look across her brow, as it curves this way, you see this very calm kind of piece, right? Which is not, not really being captured by this long unibrow that I just drew there, but it's just me finding the angle of where the eyes are gonna be. And, there's this softness to the lids and the lashes, and I think that that is going to be a really fun thing to paint. And then I also really like the angularity of the underside of the nose. I think in this case, that's just a really cool sequence of shapes for the model there. And then we can have a lot of fun too. And now we're moving away from gesture here um, and, and into drawing some features, but we can draw sort of like the full shape of the mouth. And then the chin, and so on. Now again, this is not um, proportionally accurate, or you know, this is me not, not me doing portrait drawing, but this is me kind of capturing a feeling and some energy here. And so I'm just gonna let things play out a little bit more than I would normally. I normally I might be more concerned, say, gosh, I gotta get this to look just like her because it's working for a client, or this is portrait assignment, or you know, some demo I'm doing for my students, or whatever, right? But I um, in this case, no, this is just personal work, and this is just um, just feeling it. So if I want to push this, the hair out even further this direction, and then I get the chin, the cheekbone in there, 
there's the other cheekbone here so we go here and here and um i want to get that that this pushed out this way this pushed out this way and this pushed out this way so that i'm taking this z shape or this s curve of, of her body already and just kind of pushing that even further and then what i want to do to kind of overlay on top of that exaggeration is is do some angular mark making on top of that. And I think that could really lead towards some um, interesting, really interesting drawing. So um, let's also add this kind of bag that she's carrying here. And we'll use that to, to exaggerate even further this kind of counterpose or contrapposto. Um, and then what's going to be super fun is to figure out how to play with these big yellow splotches of color um, that are sitting there in the middle of all this active posing. So let's see. Let's see. Let's see. So this is a gesture. And then what I want to do is um, create a new layer and I'm going to go to my oil brush. And I like my settings. I see my settings right here. I really like those already. So I'm going to start with some darks because I think the darks are going to be really helpful in establishing. I'm going to take the stiffness down just a wee bit and get a little bit less um, bristle texture. What I, re I really want is just to get as much kind of like the mass of the dark there because I need with all this kind of energetic um, explosive line work, I need to have a way for me to understand the painting and for me the, the the drawing is one thing but to me to understand the painting i have to get my darker values in place so i just color sampled i like the texture right there. i don't leave that um I, I just color sampled her hair and i'm just laying in and, and allowing myself like um complete editorial control like i'm not trying to draw her her hair as it lays i'm instead trying to use her hair as a jumping off point for or what I want to, what I'm feeling in this picture, and um, and here's it, you know, just it's a, I rarely paint like this for demos because usually I'm kind of working with like um, more of like a, a a starting beginner kind of mindset with some of the recent tutorials where I'm really focusing on technicality and hoping that people are are getting you know some good habits in place and and that that's been more of my interest and and. And while that's super great, and we all want those good habits, we got to train our instincts. Um, I think that there's a lot more to it. You know what I mean? So, um, and I, I kind of when I looked at this photo the other day, I was like, oh man, I just want to paint that so bad. But I didn't want to paint it as it was. I wanted to paint the feeling I, I had from it. And, um, and for me, it's a feeling isn't isn't super easy for me to pin down you know so I don't like I'm I know it when I see it but it's not like uh I have this crystal clear image in my head of oh this is what I want it to look like you know I just I just have this like feeling and, and for me feeling and and physical motion is really tied together and that could be that I was a longtime athlete as well as in in, in arts and so that it's for me they're like there's like a connection pretty strong connection between the body and the feelings and and um and i think you know we're probably all like that i don't think that's exclusive to any particular um developmental background i think you know whether you're in i mean for example like you go to a concert and you see like a bass player and, and he may be like 200 pounds overweight you know maybe he was an athlete a long time ago but it's a long 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 time ago right and so uh, it doesn't matter like he's there he's got you can tell he is like in the music right like you can always there's you can always tell the facial expressions of these people um playing music you can just just feel it you know they feel it in the way that they're they're standing and their the rhythmic motions or all the things so we're all we're all wired to, you know in that way so it's no surprise but um so but for me I, I have to paint it before i i understand it and it's not like for, for some people, they can just, you know, they just have that crystalline vision. They can see everything, every stroke they want to put down. I see how to mix every color. I see how to, um, you know, if I look at a sky, I can say, oh, wow, I would I would mix sap green and French ultramarine and 
and titanium white and a little bit of elizabeth crimson or whatever right or and whatever color you're trying to make but i i'm not like that with like the actual painting the actual painting for me is a mystery until it's made and um and that's part of why it's so important just to paint it um so a couple other things i talked about how i was going to also use kind of angular brush strokes and i would like to do that uh, but i want to also keep the brush strokes really kind of raw um, i think this just kind of leaning into the the starting point of this picture when we were doing that gestural approach with the drawing um that that was really vibrant and i want to keep that in the in the actual paint strokes and here's just kind of like a suggestion you know you you lay down gestural marks or you lay down your your pencil marks or you lay down your and your your drawing or whatever you did you do right but i think don't treat it like a coloring book you know it's, you didn't you didn't do all this work just to fill in the lines so when you when you do this work you don't have to follow it you know it's just like it's just it was just an idea and you're allowed to change the idea along the way and so a lot of times like the gesture if i do a, a lay-in with gesture i don't like i don't treat it like um, a blueprint i treat it more like um it's not it's not a hiking trail it's not like a path to follow it it's it's just just an idea just an idea and i want to keep having ideas as i paint i don't want to feel like i made the first play and that's it now i can see the end of the game um i'm going to let myself keep discovering along the way so like i said again looking for really simple brush strokes here and and like if you if you saw me and I, I did like a youtube live uh demo and it was a little clunky but we had some tech glitches but um i'm gonna do more now that we have that sorted but the real the real thing that was kind of fun about it is um just painting with really bold strokes and i was talking about how it's like it's like artless like you don't even have and I was talking about that in the, like the last painting that demo I did too. Is like it's it's almost like thoughtless. You just throw in paint, just throw in paint down, and it's a good way to work because it doesn't leave a lot of room for fear. Uh, you just turn yourself into like an action engine, and you have to just move. And I think that that really that that way of working really benefits those of us who are always working you know it's like if you paint a lot that style of painting that approach to painting is very fruitful if you don't paint a lot that that approach to painting is terrifying and counterproductive sometimes because you're you just make such disastrous messes but i think it you you should always be painting you know what i mean like so you it should be very fruitful um, if you're not painting an, at least three times a week, I would say, why? Why are you not? Because you, um, I, I don't know. I mean, I have, I, I am a hypocrite right now saying that because I did not paint all week for like five days. And the reason why, though, I'll tell you why, is because um, we had such an audacious, hardcore, last three months that um once things kind of eased up a tiny bit i literally just collapsed you know it's like have you ever been working really hard for a deadline and you know everybody's dropping like flies but you're somehow your immune system is like god level and but as soon as that you turn in the project the deadline is met you know client is whatever then you're like you and everybody else on the team get sick you know or whatever or you get sick and you're like it's it's like that, you know, where I, I finally had a chance to breathe and I just literally became a sloth. I was like, I was like in the Phoenix saga, I was just rolling around in the ashes for like four days and I could not rouse myself beyond that. I just, I was just done. And it's, it is one thing when I was in a teenager and I was doing that because that's like part of the, the whole thing of adolescence is just that gestational 
action of rolling around in the ashes of life and sorting things out in your the depth of your soul you know and and that's but but it's a totally different thing when you're a dad and you're like a professional and you have responsibilities that don't go away if you're having a hard moment so i was like how am i gonna get through this you know but i uh just did my work during the day and then at nighttime would just like watch movies or stare at my computer screen and be totally useless i couldn't even play video games like uh i like i mean i was that kid who who played soccer not baseball i don't like standing and waiting for things i want to be moving right so for me like watching tv is a little bit against the grain of my my constitution so i um i much prefer like something interactive like i can get online and play computer games with my guy with my guy friends you know we're all like all these all these dads we're all just like playing video games together at night and it's a really cool community but i'd rather i'd much rather do that because we're like doing something collaborative competitive and there's a lot of there's a lot of challenge it's highly engaging i like to play games that are just like really fast-paced highly engaging um, where there's a lot of problems to solve and a lot of immediate feedback on that and then um but I couldn't do that. You know, I was like, oh, there's all these cool events going on this week. I want to jump on. I want to see what everybody's doing. I couldn't do it. I was a sloth. I just like watched movies and um, half-heartedly even. Like I couldn't do anything. Couldn't focus. So I'm coming out of it, guys. I'm coming out of it. And um, I knew I would. The, the, the problem is, is you don't want to you know, go there, especially as if you're like in the teenage phase and you don't have as many tools yet to kind of balance things out. You just want to make sure you don't do too much too much damage you know if you're like you don't want to, to peace out in the middle of like a midterm or something big deal like a big deal like that you gotta you gotta stay engaged with the stuff you gotta stay engaged with but um as you can see here this portrait that i did of this this model is like it it's not looking exactly like her and i didn't want it to i wanted it to have its own feel and this is where like uh, the model is more of a jumping off point than it is a landing point and that is okay and uh and i'm really kind of fond of of letting this demo be a, uh the first example in a while i've done of something like that so um let's see if i can clean up just a couple of these yeah there we go get that in there a little bit. so the, there's an interesting thing that happens right at the edge of the chin and all that is it the values turn darker you have to look for that is that a lot of times like at the edge at the edge of something you're going to get whoops my phone just went off sorry about that but at the edge of something you're going to get um lighter or darker and in this case it goes darker so make sure you look at what's happening at those edges because there's usually something pretty interesting happening there. Um, here I'm going to, because of the stylization and because this is kind of like um, a little bit more illustrative than like fine art approach, I'm going to um, really use, like I rarely would just use like canvas white for a highlight, but um, I'm going to do that here just in a couple spots to add. Let's get that a little thinner. It's interesting because if you put a chunk there, that says something different about the shape of the chin than if you have just like a little sliver. So you really have to be sensitive to the shape of the highlights that you lay down. And something like that looks pretty good, but I'd still like it to be thinner. There, perfect. Be picky. You know, um, you're allowed to be picky about that stuff. So um, the next thing I want to show is this is kind of cool. So with Art Rage, the the tools are really neat in that it like simulates real paint so well that like the paints mix and they tangle together and, and they, the paint runs out on the canvas and stuff. So in areas where you're painting like these thin little slivers of like earrings or whatever, it's pretty fun to play with the performance of the, like the interactivity of, of the tools. So cool. All right. So I'm really like pretty fond of how that portrait came out. Um, again not a, not lifelike now the other thing i want to do is again exaggeration today is the key where um my mentor so he he i want to tell you a story real quick sorry jumping around my mentor ray vanilla from he was from the tau six he was one of these amazing artists from the southwest is famous in his own lifetime i could tell stories about that guy all day long and i hope up in heaven man you are watching because you are the reason i'm here uh every time i even think of him i either like kind of get a little bit teary-eyed or I uh, get goosebumps or I just feel this overwhelming gratitude 
or sometimes sorrow. You know, like there's people who you who are either, they mean so much to you that you don't know that you you know that you never were able to communicate how much they mean to you. Like there is no possible way. Um, he is that guy, and I hope he's watching from heaven because that guy was truly a, a saint. And I hope he's seeing me teaching art just like he taught me because I love that guy. And everything I know about art comes from him. I feel like, um, of course, I found you know my own truths and my own practice and my own way along the, on on the journey. But I, he was the star, he was the origin, you know, like um, where it all became real uh, in terms of like the professional aspect and and connecting all the dots in a really vibrant way so thank you ray anyway ray um he he was telling me uh in one of his workshops when i was just a kid um he was it was after the workshop we were sitting in the back patio and just drawing at the house and he was talking about how like in old cartoons the kind of squash and pull stuff it was the first time i've been from familiar familiarized with some of the animation techniques and they said you know if we're drawing Donald Duck and he's pitching a baseball, you don't draw his arm the actual length of, of the character. They would extend it out to to emphasize the movement, right? And so again, that's that's the basic premise here is that I'm just extending these shapes out to emphasize the movement. And and how cool that is. Like yeah, it just it works really well. Um there's a lot of problems with the anatomy on the hand here that I need to solve, but um I'm going to get to it later and I'm going to avoid, you know, when you have something that's a little squishy in your drawing, the first instinct is, oh crap, and you got to get in there and start tidying things up. Just don't do that. Don't do that. Instead, pull back. Simplify it. Don't jump in there with your fine tooth brush and try to like fix it. You know, don't, don't, the, the control instinct is the one you don't want to listen to. What you want to do when things start going sideways is think of yourself like, like a bird of prey. When you're about to crash into a tree or something, you don't tighten up. You just pull your wings out, lift up higher, get a better view of things, and just get some clear air around you. Like, and that's the same thing with like with painting. Is you just want to get some. You want the way you clear, kind of clear the space, is by um by simplifying. Zoom out, get a bigger brush, simplify your shapes. Don't do the thing that's like, oh, it looks bad. I got to start getting in there, zoom in, and get closer. And do the opposite every time. So here's where you can have a lot of fun. So this, I can push the energy of that gestural mark even further with long, strong, bold brushwork. It'll make that feel so much stronger than if I were to come in here and be like chop, 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 chop. It'll interrupt the rhythm. Um, it goes against the grain of what I was trying to accomplish. So, so don't do that, you know? Just put it down and leave it. Put it down and leave it. Even that's probably too much brushstroke. Just leave it. So um, let's jump in here now and start to define. And I want to talk to you about this. So see how I'm going to like lay in these marks? I can do this a couple different ways. I can draw the edge of the cuff on the arm, right? You just draw that edge. And then I could come back in, paint up to that edge. And I would suggest not doing that because you really never really break that outline. Again, that's just doing that paint by number thing. You create your own uh, coloring book. But instead, paint in such a way that your brush strokes create the edges. And either follow the contour of the shape, meaning like if I'm painting this shirt sleeve, I can paint down like this, or completely reject all semblance of order and let it just be abstract design that leads the day. So let's lean into some brushwork. I'm going to add a little bit more stiffness here and play this. And again, I'm not going to worry too much about painting the actual shape of these, the floral print on the shirt. Instead, I'm going to try and capture the that energetic um, goal that I, I have as I enter this piece. Um, I, guys, I really love getting to share this stuff with you because um, it sort of meets that um, internal need that I have for efficiency right now. Like there was a, with our son being born and my wife struggling with chronic illness that was emerged right out of the pregnancy, um, like this autoimmune stuff has got really bad super fast. Like we, it was like not, 
there wasn't really ever time for anything. Everything was just like kind of an emergency, you know, like going to the grocery store, an emergency, uh, you know, like there was no time for anything. And so if I was going to do something, it had to be multi-purpose, you know, like uh, I would, the only way I would get exercise was I'm going to run to the grocery store because it's, if I go quickly enough, it's equivalent to this, the driving time and parking and all that. And, and then I can carry the groceries back and get sort of a CrossFit workout. You know, it's like, that's sort of the way we were thinking about everything at that time. And we have not really left that mentality. And so it's, this is like so cool because I'm, I'm painting, but I'm doing a tutorial and my students can watch it or people online can find it. And that serves that instinctive need for community. And, um, and so it's like, feels fantastic. Um, so here's one quick thing too. Look at this little brush stroke that just popped out of the brush there. I just want to leave it. Just don't even interrupt it. It's not exactly the shape I wanted, but sometimes an undisturbed brush stroke, super pretty, just looks and feels so good. So let, let yourself indulge in some of the sweetness of, of painting boldly or aggressively here. Uh, let's, this is cool. This color in here is really cool. So let's just try capturing that right along the edge there. And then you gotta love, you gotta love these photographers who are composing these shots. This, look at this beautiful print uh, in that awesome sunlight. And then this evocative kind of like, I just thought that it was a really kind of beautiful emotion that was being expressed and so if you you I mean you gotta appreciate it and maybe just share this stuff online for free and during COVID when you can't set up photo shoots without worry of infection like how awesome is it you can just turn on like go navigate to a web page and find legitimately helpful stuff like thank you internet right like the world isn't just all bad anymore there are some good things happening so um This is definitely one of them. Um, all right, so are you seeing this? This is exactly what I was hoping for in terms of feel. Like I didn't, again, I didn't know exactly what it would look like, but I knew what I wanted it to feel like, and it's it's happening. It even looks cool with these like arrows coming out of the backdrop or out of the, the, the background or behind her hair or whatever. So um, you, know, you can leave that stuff if you want to. Um, but I think there's still, even though you know the idea has been established and um we aren't the idea is established but we aren't there yet so i think i i think it's worth pursuing this a little further in in terms of like actual painting in front of you because i think there are still enough problems to solve that i'm gonna want to talk about a few more things so let me just speed up a little bit i've been doing this live so it's i, I do go a little more slowly when i'm painting and talking um because it's more like meditative i think for me um weirdly kind of like verbally process while painting but um let me go just a little bit faster um even while painting these this floral print i'm very attentive to the folds of the fabric and i'm just going in search of little deviations in the value and i don't want that you know, i'm looking for consistency in the brushwork so i didn't want that like real curvy mark that came out of there so i just fixed that and then because I'm showing some of the shirt that's not actually present in the photo because I have adapted the pose to my gestural approach, I'm kind of having to invent some of the shadows. But if you're ever doing that, you just look for um, surfaces that are facing away from the, your, you know, the camera and at, at the same angle that you're painting. So you can kind of get an accurate representation of that way that that planar surface would capture the light. And then you can pretty confidently make a guess as to what would be going on in that part of the picture so you don't have to be completely um beholden to the, the imagery at all and that's kind of the lesson of today um now do you see how i painted this the center of the flower kind of off clearly off center um the idea of that is not only because it looks kind of cool but but also because it's it's fitting with gesture right like trying to um echo that exaggeration in different places than just in her pose. So even little adjustments like that are 
serving the overall goal of the picture. And I think now, let me just get the brush really big, and I probably could have done this earlier and been a lot more efficient, but um, that's why I like starting with things like hair or whatever, because you, um, it's, they're so low risk. Start in the areas where you can just play and have fun. Obviously, we'll, we'll need to kind of work on the connecting point there a little bit and getting some of these um, kind of the specular highlights in there, um, but not, not going to worry about it too much just yet. And I do want to get that shadow, whoops, that shadow established a little bit. And then pull down right here and pull. Okay, okay, okay. And now I just see this. I'm going to clean this one mark up here and. I don't like how I pulled the white so far over. Um, all right, there we go. Kind of fixing my drawing problems, and I don't mind some of them, but you have to be careful too, because as you get in there and start noodling around, you're gonna lose some of that energy. So you gotta do it with care. Um, and even though this is all gestural, I think it's still important for me um, that I have some semblance of the anatomy. I don't like things to get totally squishy and lose all this structure. Uh, I, I, I forgot about this like nice little pool of highlight around. I always love that where the skin kind of folds up where you, when you have your arm folded and it just kind of puffs up around there. Um, makes this really nice little highlight. It's always really fun to paint that. And then, I mean, I probably do a better job of that, but leave that. Um, I'm also going to pull this shadow up down a little bit more. Connect it, connect it, and connect it. Okay, so let's flip the canvas horizontally by pushing the H key. And let me move these so I can kind of see a little better. Yeah, you know, all right. It's a little bumpy through here, which I think kind of interrupts that flow that I want, but um, easy enough to fix that. I see where I was getting that information, but I think this would be better served if it was just like a smooth path there. And then I think the rib cage creates this convex shape here, which I think needs to be accentuated a little bit more. Even if it's just like suggested in that case, just gives it a little bit more space for the rib cage. Even though I'm definitely exaggerating the pose and it's making her body way more thin and lanky, but um, I get also put a little like the shadow here is really important also because it gives that indication that there's a, a plane change um, down there, so that you're you're actually seeing a little bit more of the the representation of the light and it helps things feel a bit more a bit more rounded um, three dimensionality or three dimensionally and stuff so then I'm going to come in here and try to get to just outline but really create that edge with brush strokes and then I want some of that color mixing and variety of color so that the pants area isn't just you know the end of the canvas but there's actually something to see down there um, and so I can, I can put the, like the pocket liner sticking out a little bit, and maybe some of these fasteners. Wow, let's see the copper just mixes so much with the blue that's on the canvas. It's kind of interesting. Um, and that's fine. I think that's. Fine. <laughs> Excuse my uh, cough. We have. Had a lot of fires up here, in Colorado. So let's see. Um, last little, last little thing, guys. This, this is what I wanted, and I feel really happy about it. Um, I did not want to paint 
just a realistic kind of portrait today. I wanted to, I wanted to do this. And, and notice how I just ignored the other shoulder and the other arm because I wanted to just get rid of it, um, letting this be what was seen. I feel like the other arm could be helpful. Like watch this, I'll just create a, a separate layer here and you could experiment with the other arm, but I would only want it to maybe peek out down here somewhere. And then I might want to play with like what the hand was doing and, and see if that, you know, and I would say, ah, oh, yes, no, I don't know. But something like that would be fine. Um, or you could work on, you know, having, you could, could imagine the other shoulder is here, the other arm bends, whoops, bends back here. And you got, but then you have like this a little too busy back there. Um, you know, the elbow would come forward or whatever, and maybe you could have hand coming out here. And, you know, then maybe the hand is holding something, she's holding her cell phone or whatever. So you can kind of play with that concept and, and see what works. And in that case, there's like a nice energy about that, you know, this echo of the shape and, and stuff going on. But I think for this, I'm just going to leave it um, just like that. So um, I'm going to zoom in and just show you um, one last little tip. So to notice how chunky the paint is, and that's totally fine. Um, but, you know, for me, it looked better far away. So what I'm going to do is um, you can take the intensity down just a little bit. And so that you still have that really nice bristly mark, but you can take it away from being so obnoxious. And then I could come in and refine things now that I'm a little closer to it, but I wanna do one more thing. I wanna just drag a new layer behind. I've got my sketch layer, and then I've got this color layer, and then in between, what I'm gonna do is just get kind of a darker, um, slightly darker mid-tone. And you're gonna get an additive effect here for the, the three-dimensional brush stroking, but Mostly what I'm trying to do is get some of those like white spaces filled in and it'll kind of clean up the overall. All right, there's that. And we can kind of clean this up too. I don't mind some of the canvas showing through, but I don't want as much as is there right now. And down here, I'm going to let that purpley kind of like, actually, let's go for this light blue color just to get a little bit of variety in the underpainting. And then let's see here. One more thing. One more thing. So on a separate layer here, I'm going to go and just push some of the highlights. I'm going to go light, light, light. Knuckle, knuckle, there, there. This is a really fun part of the picture because you can kind of just wing it. Um, and let's get the highlight on the elbow. And you can leave this, these highlights, just as they are. Look at that. They all look, they read right, they look good. But then you can also go into blend modes and let's try overlay to see how crazy this gets. See, it's a little too strong, right? So then you just take the opacity of that layer down and then you just get this little push, these little highlight areas. But that's an option. Going back to normal is also an option. Keeping the opacity there, but just you know, slightly less is also an option. So you, know, you have choices. Digital is great that way. Um, I like it, but I'm just gonna kind of find that middle ground and leave it there. Um, what else? Oh yeah, maybe a background. So for that, um, I'm just going to do, so let's first try this. This color of the rocks is really cool because it, um, oh, I have some areas where I painted white. Uh, that's going to be a problem, but, um, you can see how that works pretty. Actually, let's take those areas where I painted them white and just turn that into an asset. Now I want to do one more thing here. Let's move this layer and then we're going to grab this and then this and then I'm going to set the loading on my palette knife up a little bit. So I can kind of, I don't want the background to be as textural. I want that to be more paint. There we go.
All right, so we're working our way towards something good. Let's get a nice big brush. Does the work even better? Knife was not so helpful. I'm gonna grab a little richer color here and just make sure that there's a couple areas where that paint is mixing in, but it's a little bit different color, so it's not all just one boring thing. Um, there we go. And see how we're doing. Okay. I think we're gonna go ahead and leave it right there. Take the palette knife and knock down some of that extra textural mark. And my friends, I think we did art today. Oh, watch this, watch this, watch this. Let's finish with this one quick thing that I need to go. Back on that top layer, make one more layer. Just, just playing with this idea. Watch this. Loading up, drop the thickness down. Now you could just, since you already have some of these white outlines, You can go in and add more of them. And it'll let you have fun with pushing that gesture even more. Don't feel like you have to follow the outline. Again, just play, you know? So then there, 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 there. Got a little funky over there, but you get the idea. So there's a lot of different ways for you to make this work. And I think you guys will have a lot of fun with it. Um, best wishes to you. Let me know how it goes. And thank you for watching.